Good morning, nice city. This is Mr. Horseman, and welcome back to another Cyberpunk 2077 video. Today, I'm gonna show you how to get all the iconic weapons and walk you through them in chronological order as much as possible. First things first, you wanna start as a corporal, because later in the game, there's an iconic weapon that you can only get as a corporal. Kinda sucks, but there are other weapons better than this, so you can just forget about it unless you're looking at 100% weapon collection like I am. Also, make sure you talk to this guy, Frank, who will be giving you the iconic weapon in the future, whether he likes it or not. I have put timestamps in the video, so if there's a specific iconic weapon you're looking for, you can just jump over there, and I have also made out a checklist map, I made it with Photoshop, so you can check your collection progress. So, well then, let's get started right away. Alright, as soon as the player finishes prologue, goes into Act 1 and wakes up in his apartment in Little China, Wesson, four iconic weapons become available. And since Wesson is still under lockdown at this point of the game, if you try to go to other areas to get the other iconic weapons in other areas, the police is gonna try to kill you. But if you can find your way into other areas, you know, without getting yourself killed, with illegal methods, if you will it, it is no dream. You can get the other weapons early in the game. But, you know, for the sake of the video, I'm gonna go over those other weapons later in the video. Alright, let's go grab our first iconic weapon in the game, the Dying Knight. Go down the stairs there and make a left here. And you see the guys fighting over there, they will lead us to another iconic weapon in later in the game. Not right now. Right now, uh, where, where the hell is the owner? Hey, come on. I wanna buy something, goddammit. Show me your stuff. There we go. And uh, where is it? Oh, there it is. Dying Knight. That's the one we want to buy. Our first iconic weapon in the game. I think it gives you like 50% extra headshot damage or something like that. And it's uh, automatic, so that's pretty cool early in the game. Now let's uh, try to kill some people with it. Starting with this nice lady here. Oh, I get a warrant. Nice. Let's kill more people. Ooh, yeah. I'm a cyber psycho now. Alright, moving on to the next iconic weapon. We wanna go over to the northwest of Northside Wesson and look for this monk around here. Apparently this guy's brother is abducted by Maelstrom gang members, so we're gonna go save him. We come to the pile of containers around here. We wanna climb up these containers instead of going up front to the enemies. This way this quest can become a lot easier, especially if you're early in the game. Okay, after they're done talking, you wanna climb up here, cross this bridge, and I think there's a little bit of waiting around here too. Yeah, they're uh, making fun of the brother. After that, we can take them out one by one. You can decide to either kill them or you know, take them down a non-lethal way. Uh, it doesn't really matter, you will still get your iconic weapon, although the NPC's dialogue will be a little different. But that's for you to find out. And uh, if you look over here, there it is, Fenrir. Another iconic weapon. Alright, the next one is also in the northwest of Northside Wesson, just like Fenrir. In fact, it's really close to where we got Fenrir a while ago. It's like right next to it in the southeast direction. And it is a suspected organized crime activity or Soka as I like to call it, instead of a side job. Basically have to kill all the enemies for some money, street cred, experience, and some awesome gears. In this case, we are going to get the Bud Saw, uh, or crafting spec of Bud Saw uh, weapon. And I recommend you using a sniper rifle for this quest, because basically the enemies are uh, playing a tower defense here. They're like defending their fortress. And there it is, crafting spec bot so. Alright, moving on. Another suspected organized crime activity. Also in the northwest of Northside Wesson. It's uh, right in between where we got Fenrir and bot so. And that's the guy. Yeah. I got lucky I has shot that guy. That guy gives us the crafting spec for Sam 11.6. Alright, and the next weapon is from the main story quest, the pickup. 
And here you have to decide whether you want to get a decent pistol right now and a blunt weapon a little bit later in the game, or a game-breaking overpowered pistol much later in the game. If you want to go with the former, you have to decide to antagonize Royce and his gang members by either killing him or paying him with the rigged credit from Stout. But if you want to go with the latter, you want to, you do want to get the overpowered pistol much later in the game. You don't want to antagonize Royce. And you can do that by either paying him with the chip, but do warn about the virus, or remove the virus yourself before giving it to him, or you can also pay with your own money. This time I'm gonna antagonize Royce and get the iconic pistol, Chaos. Alright, next one. In the main story quest, the heist, if you come over here in your Renoble's place, you get the iconic pistol Congo. After a while, T will attempt to hack open the balcony door, but you don't want to get out just yet. Instead, you want to turn around and climb up the stairs around here, to the ceiling or roof, and you see a couple guards here. Nothing we have to worry about, because they're gonna move into the corners, making it easy for us to kill them silently. After we take out the guards, we just want to open the the AV and get our next iconic weapon, Satori. At the end of the main story quest, the heist, someone is gonna ask you where you want to send something to. I'm not gonna tell you what that something is yet because that'll be a spoiler. Just make sure you answer that someone with family. Send the something to its family for one iconic weapon that we'll be getting in the near future. And that is the end of Act 1. Now that we are in Act 2, Watson is no longer under lockdown and we can freely travel to other areas to pick up more iconic weapons, you know, without using illegal methods. The order doesn't really matter, but let's go from Westbrook first. And it's another suspected organized crime activity, but this time in Japantown, Westbrook's, in the southern area of Japantown. We just want to kill everyone until you get to the guy who has the crafting spec for Sovereign. Kill this guy. And that's the guy. That's the guy who has the Sovereign. After you have taken care of every enemy, you just gotta pick it up. Sovereign. Crafting spec. Nice. Alright, another suspected organized crime activity. This time in North Oak, Westbrook. Near Arasaka Estate. And it is a perfect chance as any to test out Sovereign that we just got from our previous run. What's nice about Sovereign is that it shoots two rounds at the same time, which boosts its damage a lot, and as you can see the reloading speed is crazy. I did add the shotgun perks that boost my reloading speed, but the gun itself has a really fast reloading speed too. I think it takes only half time to reload than other double barrel shotguns. And if you come over here, you have to kill this machine boss. Three, four, and dead. Easy. And there it is, the crafting spec for the hazmat. Oh yeah. Alright, that's everything we can find in Westbrook. Now let's go down to Santo Domingo. Alright. In the southeast, the Rancho Coronado, Santo Domingo, they got a little shooting competition going. And joining the competition will start the side job Stadium Love. And if you beat the top score, you'll get the iconic rifle, Divided We Stand. It is a multi-target smart rifle. It's pretty good. So let's go do this. All you have to do is drink and shoot in four different stations. And the captain will hand you over the gun. But alternatively, you can also just uh, kill everyone and just take the gun. Fuck competition. That works too. Anyway, it should be a pushover. And for beating the top score, we get a divided we stand. Might as well a chance to test out the weapon. Again, why not? Start off by killing these guys. Ooh. Ooh. I don't see the multi-target going, but it's strong. That's a lot of damage. Alright, moving on to the next one. In the southern area of Rancho Coronado, Santo Domingo, 
They got a uh, suspected organized crime activity going. You just gotta kill everyone. I recommend you using sniper rifle here too, but it don't really matter. And then you will get into this lady in jeans. She's the one who has the crafting spec for breakthrough. Alright, let's move on to the next iconic weapon. In Arroyo Santo Domingo, there's another suspected organized crime activity going. Just have to make your way through your enemies until you come across this guy with the face mask. If you kill this guy, you will get the crafting spec for Comrade's Hammer. Alright, that's everything we can find in Santo Domingo at this point of the game. Now let's move on to Pacifica. Interesting enough, there's only one iconic weapon we can get in Pacifica. You wanna go to the Westwind Estate Pacifica and find these guys. Another suspected organized crime activity. Just make your way through your enemies like we always do until you find this guy with the light machine gun. If you kill this guy, we get the crafting spec for Moron Lave. Is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. I forget about it. Okay, that's everything we can do in Pacifica. Now let's go to Haywood. Our next target is Skippy. If you climb over the fence here and look closely enough, there's a gun lying on the ground for you to pick up. The location is near the borderline of the Glen and Vista del Rey, Haywood. You should see an undiscovered side job in your map. Wait. You know what I'm thinking? This guy just looks like... Who, who is that? Mistas the Sex Pistols from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Oh. Anyway, uh, if you try to get this gun during Watson's lockdown, you know, with illegal methods, Skippy will keep its mouth shut, it just won't say anything. Just FYI. Alright, moving on to the next iconic weapon. Another suspected organized crime activity in the southwest of the Glen, Haywood. As you can see, these guys are playing tower defense, so a sniper rifle is highly recommended. And if you have killed enough people, you run into this guy who looks like a turtle. Who has the crafting spec for Ying Long. Spoiler alert. If you are still in Act 1, watch the next scene that's about to unfold at your own discretion. Okay, remember Takemura killing Dex after Dex drags the player out the trash pile? If you go back to that trash pile, you can find Dex and his pistol he used to kill the player, Plan B, still lying on the ground. Okay, spoiler alert again. If you are still in Act 1, watch the next scene at your own discretion. Remember I said when someone asks you where to send something to, answer him slash her to send that something to its family? Back in the main story quest, The Heist, it was Delamain asking you where to send Jackie's body to. If you send the body to his family, you will be eligible to obtain the next iconic weapon, La Chingona Dorada. After 24 hours after attending Jackie's funeral. Okay, for the next iconic weapon, we have to go to the afterlife for the side job Big in Japan. After talking to Dennis, Dennis will ask us to deliver him a cargo. And for our reward, we we'll get the iconic weapon, Scalpo. Remember I mentioned earlier in the video about the guys fighting near player's apartment when we were trying to get our first iconic pistol dying knight? That was Coach Fred beating up his punching bag. If you talk to the coach, he will tell you to defeat four champions in four different areas. One of them four champions is this guy, Buck, the champion of Arroyo. To get the next iconic weapon, 05, you have to mention Buck's rifle and make him bet on the rifle before trying to fight him. Okay, let's beat the hell out of this guy. The fight can be very easy if you have gorilla arms like I do, even if you don't have any body attributes. Although you do have to be over 20 street cred to be able to buy gorilla arms. And Bog blocks a lot, so let's use strong attacks to break his blocks and follow with fast attack combos. And whenever there's a chance, counter his attacks like this. Oops, screwed up this one, but that's okay. Use strong attack to break his block, dodge, counter, fast attack combo, break his block with strong attack, fast attack, 
and finish him. There we go. Hand over the rifle. Apparently, Buck doesn't want to accept his defeat, and he and his crew are gonna try to kill you. So let's uh, take care of him. After taking care of him, we get the iconic weapon 05. Okay, that's all the iconic weapons we can get from the open world at this point of the game. Now we have three main story quest lines we can choose from, Judy's, Pan Am's, and Takemura's. And again, it doesn't really matter which one you do first, but I'm gonna go with Judy's first. Alright, moving on to the next iconic weapon. In the main story quest, automatic left, at Lizzie's bar in Kabuki Wesson. After talking to Judy, we can go into the back room here, to find another iconic weapon. Let's open this door too and go down the stairs to basement and another door and we'll find Lizzie. Very good pistol at this point of the game. Okay, now we are at Klaus, the VIP lounge. Now we have to sneak into Woodsman's office by going into this restricted area and if we look to the left, there's a hidden room here for Employees, not really hidden. Anyway, if we go over here, we'll find the next iconic weapon Evelyn's jacket. No, cocktail stick. A sword. Can I use it to kill these guys? I guess not. Alright, now we're at Finger's office or bedroom. And if you look at the bed, there's the next iconic weapon Cottonmouth. Alright, after you finish the main story quest transmission, you may or may not receive a text from a stranger. If you read the text, the side job, send in the clowns will start. After talking to Azabon the Hollow, you meet him by the market entrance, Japantown. Well, the man said he needs a ride. Here's a ride. Okay, we're here at Chinatown. Let's wait for Azab to pick up his food and get the hell out of here. Oh my god, what the hell? Did your nose explode, Azza? What the hell is going on here? What the fuck was that? And why are these guys trying to kill me? Well, bring it on, boys. And for completing the side job, we get the iconic weapon, or iconic grenade, Azza's nose. Also, after the main story quest transmission, if you have started as a corpo and have talked to Frank, Frank may or may not give you a call. And it seems like Frank has a little present for the player. A briefcase. If you open it up, Frank appears from behind. Hello, v. Man, time flies. Not about to and try to kill you. Which is not happening. And for killing him, we get the iconic weapon, Apparition. Okay, now we're in Pan Am's main story quest, Ghost Town. After recovering Pan Am's stolen vehicle from the Raffins, you can decide whether or not you want to help out Pan Am take care of Nash. Let's help her out, why not? The plan is go to Raffin's base and take care of every single Raffin in the base, including Nash. And for taking care of him, we get the iconic precision rifle, Widowmaker. Remember back in the main story quest the pickup, I said something about choosing a decent pistol when a blunt weapon right now, or a much stronger pistol much later in the game? Well, we're about to grab that blunt weapon now. If you have cooperated to Meredith Stout during the quest, she will send you a text at some point in Act 2. For me, I got her text when I was in the middle of Judy's main story quest, Double Life. And if you text Meredith Stout back, you and she can have coitus. Bet you didn't expect to see me here. And after enjoying your coitus, you can pick up an iconic adult toy, Sir John Felstiff, on her double bed. After finishing Pan Am's main story quest, Life During Wartime, 
A new NPC, Elizabeth Perales, may or may not call the player for the side job, I fought the law. Where they will meet another new NPC, River Ward, who will give them the side job, The Hunt, which we are doing right now. Before entering the barn though, let's pay a visit to this house by using technical ability. And let's go up the stairs. And in the room to the right, when you crouch, there's a little hidden button you can click. And if you click the button, there's a hidden room you can enter. And there's a hidden Tinkerbell you can pick up to kill people. Alright. Now we're at River's place for a small family get-together. We're helping River cook jambalaya and play with the kids, play some augmented reality shooters, and have a heartwarming dinner. After a bit, River will give us his piece, Crash, an iconic pistol away. In Takemura's main story quest, Give Me Danger, the player tries to sneak into a warehouse in Arasaka Industrial Park, and there are some containers near the entrance to the warehouse, In one of those containers is the next iconic weapon, Prototype Shingen Mark V. In the next main story quest, Play is Safe, on the way to the second sniper at the 21st level balcony, if you enter this room, you can see a hidden treasure behind the bars. And the password to the treasure is 2906. And I think you can even hack it open if your attack attribute is high enough. And we get the next iconic weapon, Genjiro. Later in the quest, there will be a boss fight. After taking care of the boss, we get the Jinchu Maru. Okay, now we're just one quest away from entering Act 3. Before doing that though, let's get some more iconic weapons from doing some side jobs for Johnny, Judy, and Pan Am. It doesn't really matter which one you do first, but I'm gonna go with Johnny's first. In Johnny's side job chipping in, to find leads about Adam Smasher, player and Rogue goes to Abu Nikodox in Northside Wesson, where they can find the next iconic weapon, Malorian Arms 3516. Alright, we got Chaos and Sir John Felistif by antagonizing Royce and siding with Meredith Stealth back in the main story quest, The Pickup. This time, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna be friends with Maelstrom guys and forget about Stealth. Let's see what happens. Just remember, to be friends with them, either pay them with your own cash, or pay with the rig chip but warn them about the virus, or wipe the virus yourself before giving it to them. Apparently Militech has decided to go full regalia on us. Let's get the hell out of here, with Dum Dum. Doing so will allow Dum Dum and Royce reappear much later in the game, in Johnny's side job Second Conflict where you can kill Dum Dum for one of the best, if not the best, and my personal favorite iconic weapon in the game, Doom Doom. Later in the same quest, Second Conflict, player can find the next iconic weapon, Gold-Plated Baseball Bat, stuck in the concrete field swimming pool. In the side job A like Supreme, the samurai band regroups for a little concert. After the concert, Kerry will hand over his gun, Archangel, another iconic weapon, to the player. You shouldn't have, really. The very gun I tried to shoot Johnny with when he broke into my house. All right. Alright, now we're at Judy's side job, Pisces. There are many different approaches you can take, depending on what dialogue choices you make. Whatever the choices you make though, just remember, do not accept Michael's payment. If you do that, Judy's next side job, Pyramid Song, which is required to get another iconic weapon, will be permanently locked out. And if you look over here, there's the next iconic weapon, 
爪闘技。After completing Judy's side job, Pyramid Song, Judy gives the player permission to freely enter and exit her apartment. And if you do, you'll find the next iconic weapon, Mox, sitting on her table. Okay, now we're at Pan Am's side job, Riders on the Storm. It looks like Sol is abducted by the Wraith, so let's go rescue him. In the main entrance, you'll find this guy with the hair. For killing him, we get the next iconic weapon, Problem Solver. And for completing the quest, Riders on the Storm, Pan Am gives us one of the best, if not the best, and my personal favorite iconic sniper rifle in the game, Overwatch. I know. After finishing the quest Riders on the Storm, Mitch will send you a text about someone's funeral. And if you go to the camp and find Mitch, the side job of Fly Away will appear. Which may disappear if you start Pan Am's next side job with a little help from my friends. And for completing the quest, we get an iconic knife, Stinger. Okay, that's all the iconic weapons we can get from the side jobs. Now let's move on to Act 3. In the main story quest Nocturne OP55N1, we can choose how to progress with the main story by making different choices. I recommend you backing up your save file before doing it because some of the iconic weapons are only obtainable from certain storylines. This time we're gonna go with Rogue's storyline which is available if you have finished Johnny's side job, Blistering Love. Doing so, we'll start the main story quest For Whom the Bell Tolls, where we can get the next iconic weapon, Prejudice. Alright, now we're at Rogue's next main story quest, Knocking on Heaven's Door, somewhere in the middle of Arasaka Tower. And if you look carefully, there's a shovel on the rock where Rogue is standing next to. Let's pick it up after taking out the guards. And we get the next iconic weapon, Caretaker Spade. Later in the same quest, knocking on Heaven's door, we can pick up the next iconic weapon, Pry from the ground. Okay, now we're back in the main story quest Nocturne OP55N1. This time let's go with Pan Am storyline, which is available if you have completed Pan Am's side job, Queen of the Highway. In doing so, we'll start the main story quest We Gotta Live Together at the Out of Cattle's Camp. And if you talk to this guy, Cassidy, you can play a mini game to win the next iconic weapon, Amnesty. Spoiler alert! The next scene that you're about to watch may or may not be a spoiler to you, even though I'm not gonna mention any characters' names. So watch at your own discretion. Okay, it is finally time for the final iconic weapon in the game. If you have defeated the final boss and looted his slasher access token from his slasher course, you can find another iconic weapon from his slasher office, located at Ebunikidox, after you have watched the ending credits and returned to the point of no return. And just follow my directions, go up the stairs, go up to the cargo ship, and if you open up this door with the access token, you can find the next iconic weapon, Ba Sing Chong. That was a lot of iconic weapons. The checklist map is available for download in the video description in PNG and Photoshop PSD format. You can use it to keep track with your collection progress. And if the video helped you, you can support me by liking the video and subscribing to this channel. I did some Monster Hunter and Final Fantasy videos in the past, and I plan on doing some more variety of video games in the days to come.
Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. Adios.